It's Monday. Hooray! Yep. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Here we go. Yeah. <laughs> See if we can do another five for five this week. That was impressive last week. Why let the uh, the streak end? Uh, ambivalence, uh, tiredness. You know, Paul, when I think trusted names and technology, you know who jumps right to the top of that list? <laughs> That's a trick question, Brad, but no, who? Forbes.com. Yep. <laughs> um, so sure. for those of you who have not seen, Forbes kicked out a very oddly specific report this week talking about Microsoft's upcoming Centaurus device, which is supposed to have two nine-inch displays, Intel processors on the assembly line and coming out uh, sometime in next year, first half of next year, I believe. me. Did they say Q1 or did they say first half? Whatever. Oh, I don't read anything on Forbes, Brad, so I don't know. Yeah, and that it will also run Android apps. And um, yeah. yeah. Sure. So this sounds like a Verigesque report where they collate things other people have published and <laughs> too obvious, uh, too, too specific. So, you know, and then they confirm it, you know, those guys. So, yeah, th this report is <laughs> interesting from a number of perspectives. One, it is very oddly specific, mm -hmm. right? Like it's got screen size, it's got four by three aspect ratio, it's got launch date, it's got a chip, it's got. Everything Four that, by three. All, all the way through, which I've been asking around, uh, even though it is still very early on um, yeah. various geographical time zones. Mm -hmm. And this is odd. <laughs> First off, um, I had heard Centaurus, which, by the way, was going to be running an ARM chip. Um, this says it's running Intel. Now, it's very possible that this could, Microsoft likely has Intel and ARM based variants of yep, everything that they do. That. Yep. That would not surprise me in the slightest. What what is tying me up on this is mm -hmm. that I have the heard Forbes that, part? that well, <laughs> that um, yeah, yeah. this is this is my hang up with some of the information. I have heard that Centaurus is definitely not in production, and now according to the Forbes report, this information came from people who are familiar with the supply chain of all that mm -hmm. stuff. I don't think that Microsoft is mass producing Centaurus devices in a shop somewhere in China or anywhere in the world at this point. I, I really don't. And so mass producing. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I agree. So what I think might be mass produced right now is Intel's potential Copper Lake OEM reference device. Remember they showed this off as actually they even did a big thing with the Verge where it's Intel showed off yeah. their foldable PC and they were shopping that around to OEMs. Um, you know what else is being mass produced right now, by the way? Yeah. The crap on the Internet. <laughs> yeah. We're having such a good conversation. So, <laughs> I know. I'm sorry. Anyways, um, I'm not saying that Forbes is all wrong. Like the Android stuff, we've known that Microsoft has been working on that. That's been around since the Windows Phone days. They had that stuff up and running. Um, right. Right. There, to Paul's point at the initially, like this is just a lot of conglomeration of things that we already knew with a timeline, and it it, it just feels. That's how it feels to me. Like it it doesn't feel wrong, but it doesn't feel right. It just feels awkward that it's so specific. At this yeah. time. And yeah. So anyways. I mean, there's not a hell of a lot going on right now. So yep. let's dig into the well and see what comes up in the bucket. Yeah. I, it's We'll see. Um, I Like I've heard that the Centaurus device isn't even like assigned to a product team yet. Like it's still sort of in that. Yeah. Um, it's basically where Andromeda was, right? It, it's this device they have. Um, and, and if anybody on this podcast can give me a reason why this device should exist other than being aspirational. Other than it would be cool. Exactly. Well, so know, that's what I've heard. Everybody who's seen and touched this device is like, yeah, this thing is really cool. But mm -hmm. if I was going to go write a paper, <laughs> I would still pull out a laptop. If I was going to do anything other than stand up on a stage and be like, oh, look how cool we are. Like, it doesn't make sense. And even from like a Windows Lite perspective, I still don't think it makes sense because um, right. as Paul and I both know, Surface, the Surface brand does not make money yet. It's supposed to be close to be breaking even, but it's still not a like a net income producing entity inside of Microsoft. And so the yeah. idea of going to Amy and saying, hey, Amy, we're going to mass produce this device. And Amy, it's, it, Amy Hood? Yes. <laughs> well, you're really, really personalizing this. Oh, yes. Because when you think about it, like they have, <laughs> even though it's Penos yeah. and that team, they still have to go Penos get Penos. money. <laughs> To like you really, it's on first name basis with all these people. Yeah, yeah, oh we're, we're BFFs. You know, our yeah, kids okay. play softball okay. together. Yep. And mm -hmm. uh, 
anyway, so like, can you can you imagine going to Amy? You know, because we're BFS. And be like, look, I need money to mass yeah. produce this device that we know is not going to make money. It doesn't. Okay. Um, it's something. Maybe else. now is the time, Brad, to tell the story of something that is real that could be happening inside of Microsoft. Mm -hmm. And you can read about it later in The Verge. Should I tell this story? Well, I thought you were going with the bar scene, um, but I don't even know. <laughs> no, I was going with the, um, the phone thing. Oh, hmm. you can. Uh, let, me, let me put it slightly more theoretical rather than substantive. Yes. But let's put it this way. You've all heard the phrase billion dollar businesses at Microsoft, right? Mm -hmm. And the problem with a company the size of Microsoft is that to get something off of the ground, it has to be a billion dollar business. Yeah. Right. It has to have the, uh, the possibility of becoming a, a billion dollar business. Mm -hmm. um, it's actually very easy to do that with hardware, right? Because hardware just, because it costs so much and, uh, you know, it's not like, remember, uh, well, Brad, you were probably too young to remember this, but a long, long time ago, like back in the late 1980s, early 1990s, you know, Microsoft Office products, the individual apps cost a couple hundred bucks a piece. Mm -hmm. And if you wanted to buy the whole suite, it was like $600, $800, somewhere in that, in that, in that you know, range. Now, they can't charge that much for software today. In fact, most software is kind of free, basically. But um, the only real high price stuff in the tech world these days is hardware. And so because of the price of these things, it's actually pretty easy to ship enough units to call this thing a billion dollar business. Mm -hmm doesn't have to make money. It doesn't have to earn profits. Right. It just has to earn revenues of a billion dollars. Um, Microsoft could do that right now with phones, right? Mm -hmm. uh, theoretically speaking, if uh, Microsoft hired a, a third party, someone like uh, the company that makes the Nokia phones, was HMD, yeah. I think it's called, or, or anyone, doesn't matter what the company is, and says, hey, look, this is what we're going to do. We're going to take a, re a reference design of an Android phone. We're going to put all of our software on it. Uh, we're going to do maybe something funky with the cameras, you know, who knows, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and we're going to sell them under the Microsoft brand, right? They could probably generate a billion dollars in revenues, but don't confuse that with being profitable or successful. Right. Uh, and that's the problem. And by the way, just as an aside, one of the problems facing Microsoft, a company that I still refer to as a software giant, because by and large, it still makes software technically, you know, services are all software. Um, a lot of little but useful software products within Microsoft get kind of left by the wayside because they're never going to be billion dollar businesses. Mm -hmm. Something like OneNote, right? Which is very useful, probably used by millions of people. How does OneNote generate revenues? They give it away inside of Windows 10 now. It's yeah. free, right? Things like that, like To Do or any, you can name anything. And those mobile apps they made, like Sway, whatever, whether mm -hmm. or not they exist anymore. Like it's really hard to justify the development of these things because they are not a billion dollar business. They have to be subsumed into something bigger that is a billion dollar business, yep. Office 365, Microsoft 365, whatever. Um, but then they get proportioned resources and it's you know it's not a pretty picture. So Microsoft is not necessarily the best place to go if you get like a hot new software startup kind of a thing because it's hard to make a, sure. a billion dollar business. So anyway, to bring us back to what you were talking about, whatever this thing is, whatever devices or device that Microsoft comes out, whatever this platform is that Microsoft, you know, that they make. I mean, for Microsoft, you know, obviously, I guess it would be part of Surface. They can subsume or um, subsidize perhaps some form of R&D and uh, some number of years of it not making a ton of money, but it has to kind of eventually make sense. Like it has to, you know, eventually. And, and, and this device that Forbes is describing or a lot of these two mm -hmm. screen devices, frankly, don't make a lot of sense. Could they ship enough of them for that that one thing to be a billion dollar business? I actually don't think so. Yeah. Um, Surface, of course, is a billion. In fact, it's probably getting close to being a two billion dollar business, whatever the number is. But um, you just, I, I guess, we have to kind of remember it in that context when you think about these things, because the "it's cool" argument doesn't fly at a company like Microsoft. It can't just be cool. There has to be uh, executives in the company that want it to happen for whatever reason, political mm -hmm. or otherwise. There has to be Amy Hood uh, signing off on it, like you said, or Satya Nadella and the senior leadership team agreeing that this thing they're doing is strategic or somehow part of a wider strategy that makes sense for the company. Is this a lot of things that have to kind of happen? So I, I, yeah. I don't, I don't know. I just don't. It just doesn't make sense. Yeah. To me. I don't know. We'll see. Um, time will be the ultimate purveyor of truth on this stuff. And uh, we know that there's expected well, to be yeah. a hardware event in October. I don't know if this is going to show up there. So uh, by, the way, by the way, sorry to interrupt, but you're yeah. right. What you just said is right, but I want people to make, I want people to understand what that really means. Um, time will be the purveyor of truth. You're right. Um, that doesn't mean that what comes out is the truth <laughs> because 
there will be initiatives that happen inside of Microsoft that don't come to a, some product fruition. It doesn't mean it didn't happen, right? Mm -hmm. And so, you know, like this Andromeda thing, for example, it may be Andromeda as originally envisioned, Andromeda, whatever, the second gen, whatever, m maybe it never happens. Doesn't mean it didn't, you know, happen. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean Microsoft didn't go down that path. Um, you know, this thing, like you mentioned, Android apps on Windows Phone, for example. It was mm -hmm. something that happened. It didn't happen for people out in the world. Oh, yeah. But it happened. And then they were like, holy crap, we can't do this because this will submarine the, the Windows Phone app ecosystem, you know. So th that, this is a perfect segue. So that's a perfect question of if they did this now on a new device, mm -hmm. it's not going to tank UWP, right? I mean, I think it makes more sense uh, to be able to support that. But at the same time, I don't really know what problem it's going to solve for on a device like Centaurus. Not, I mean, launching an Android phone makes a lot of sense. I can understand how they could justify that. But bringing Android yeah. apps to the desk you know, quote unquote desktop would be interesting I, I will say in defense of a phone I, I I don't know that there is a lot of call for Microsoft software like the the Android launcher you know whatever um, but Android is Android and I think the one thing that HMD has shown with the Nokia brand and then you know going after purview uh, pure view I almost call it purview <laughs> pure view you know the camera brand and then uh, not really I no one knows Nokia today for camera <laughs> You know, mm -hmm. excellence, unfortunately. That's something they really should have gone after. Um, and maybe they still will. But, um, you know, when you get rid of all of the overhead of the no, uh, the classic Nokia phone business, mm -hmm. what, you find, what, you just, what you find out is you can have a pretty small thing there that actually can be profitable um, and can w make sense. And so I, th I think the Nokia phone line today, which, again, is HMD, really, I think they've done a tremendous job with the brand. And that's something you don't actually see a lot. Yeah. Um, so there is a possibility there if Microsoft did it the same way. Mm -hmm. Maybe. Yeah. I mean, we, we will see. The Surface story for this fall is coming together. We know that Windows Lite is there. We know mm -hmm. that um, Teams for Life or the Microsoft version of Consumer 365. Um, I mean, if you kind of throw all this stuff together, I bet we see like a Lite Teams for Life hardware event in October. That would probably be a pretty big narrative um, worthy of an event. Yep. Yeah. So. Yeah. We'll see. Yeah, we'll but, you know, two seven-inch screens or whatever this thing was? I mean, really? I You know, um, no, uh, we keep mentioning the Lenovo. Mm -hmm. I think it was just called the Yoga, I yeah, think. Yeah, that, or that, the that little, clamshell device thing that you could ride on. Yeah. super thin, useless yep. piece of crap that looked excellent but was ridiculous in real life. And you see, know, that kind what of thing. you just said is yeah. yep. Centaurus. And yeah, people I know. are going to be real angry. But, again, until somebody comes up with the justification for a device like this to exist other than, hey, we look kind of cool. Um, this yeah, is, uh, you know, the, the uh, you know uh, Bill Gates came out uh, recently in a video and he wrote about this and he said, you know, my biggest mistake was that I was Windows Phone, right? Mm -hmm. um, I actually disagree with that. Un I, I, unfortunately for Bill Gates, um, there were a number of things that happened ahead of Windows Phone that uh, kind of barreled the company in a certain direction and they were never going to win mobile anyway, but Whatever. I mean, okay, fine. That's it's Bill Gates. I'm not going to argue with Bill Gates, but you know, the problem with losing mobile is that that's where all the big innovation is going to be going forward. Like when you think about standard productivity tasks or even playing games on computers, mm -hmm. the, the typical things that people still use computers for, it's not really going anywhere, right? Like this stuff, we're going to see thinner, lighter, more powerful, better battery life, blah blah blah. It's but it's going to be evolutionary. There's no exciting revolutionary new computer form factor that's going to make the PC come roaring back to life is the big thing anymore. Like, it's over, right? We all kind of get that. Um, but the excitement's all happening in mobile. And when you think about truly useful new types of devices, um, you have to think about them in terms of the mobile form factor. And the two that come to mind are augmented reality, right? Where you're, because you have the thing with you, it, it is ever more useless, no, uh, useful, sorry, than like this thing you have to cloak down in your head and, you know, mm -hmm. looks ridiculous today, although that may change over time. And then the other one is um, these folding form these folding form factors, right? Where a phone, by virtue of the fact that it can kind of unfold like a butterfly into this bigger thing, can now be docked and can be used like a computer, um, is a real challenge for the computer because yep. the computer can't do the reverse, right? And, and I, I mean, it could, I guess, technically, but you're not going to use a computer operating system to do the reverse. Mm -hmm. And this is the challenge. This has always been the challenge, I think, for the PC form factor. So. Uh, for the PC platform or whatever. I, it, mobile is the future, and that is the real tragedy of Microsoft losing in mobile because they can run apps on top of that stuff, but they can't control the direction of the platform. And yep. So this thing is cute and everything, but limited. Yep. This is limited. 
Um, shifting shifting directions here, Paul. Um, mm -hmm. Some breaking news out of the Twitter universe. Do you know the name okay. Gabe All? I do. He just tweeted. He, today finally... is, he just said, tweeted today is my first day as a Facebook employee. Yeah, I was just I was literally going to say as he finally left Microsoft. Yeah. Um, After more than two decades at Microsoft, I'm excited for a new adventure. I want to thank all immensely all the Windows insiders who I've been so fortunate to connect with over the years on Twitter. So. He's so out. I'll just tell one quick gay ball story because this kind of blew me away. Aside from the fact that he, as you know, Brad, I mean, he's, he's an awesome guy. Mm -hmm. And um, he was exactly the kind of engineering type I think that we need today very badly at the top mm -hmm. of the Windows Insider program. I, 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 I think that it needs to be more about engineering and less about marketing. But you know, that's just my, my opinion. But whatever. He's a great guy. I don't think anyone would argue about that. But the thing that was weird to me about him is that I have been writing professionally about Microsoft and Windows since – I'm going to say 1994, you know, a long time ago, over 20, 25 years ish, and um, and and was very heavily involved in the Windows community, such as it is, from Windows 95 on, certainly, and then you know, in the post 95 days, as Microsoft was looking to converge the operating systems and whatever, I was very heavily involved, you know, super safe mm -hmm. for Windows and so forth. I had never heard of this man until they talked about him at the original Windows 10 event, <clears throat> and then Mary Jo. Actually, I don't think they talked about him. They, Mary Jo and I, after the inter, after the press conference or whatever, had an interview with somebody named Gay Ball. And so, as I always do, I look at Mary Jo and I and I say, "Who is this person?" And she always says, "Oh, he, blah 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 blah, whatever." And she says, "I have no idea." <laughs> and so, I was really surprised to discover that this guy had been working on Windows and specifically on building Windows for decades, mm -hmm. and I had never heard of him. He was just never public facing. And I think you might remember this too. I think he said this when he stopped being part of the insider program. He was kind of unprepared for that public facing part yeah. of it because he just never dealt with the public, right? So it's bad enough he had to talk to people like you and me and Mary Jo, but then he had to interact with normal people on Twitter and, you know, was, you know, remember those guys from Russia were making those crazy Photoshopped images oh, yeah. and stuff and all that crap. I mean, I think for him it was difficult <laughs> you know mm -hmm. but i just had never heard of the guy he, he actually had been around forever it's really kind of impressive yeah yep well 20 years to be yeah specific. that's unbelievable that he went to facebook though yes let us never forget that he saved us from recycle bin gate if you remember that trash icon <laughs> that showed up i actually made a t-shirt about it and wore it to build that's beautiful uh, because it was a courageous act in the face of yes i wonder if he's uh, working to usurp facebook from within does he mention that in his tweet he does not. No. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> he, hmm. he does not. So. No, oh, that's crazy. Yeah. Big. This is. You know. I feel like this has been one of our more quality podcasts. Unlike some of those. Yeah. I've seen it. It got off to such a rough start. It did. It you did. know. Well, we will uh, keep an eye out on what's happening <laughs> in the surface demographic right back here. For sure. Um, yeah. There's. Gonna, I think it's going to be an interesting. It, it's, I think it's going to be an interesting year from a chip perspective. I think it's going to be a boring year from potentially hardware perspective. So, well, well yeah, actually, we'll see. You know, um, IFA, right, which happens in September. Mm -hmm. I think we're going to see. You know, we'll see some of the first 8x, 8CX designs for, on the Snapdragon front. Yep. It's possible because that is that kind of mobile-oriented chips that we might see some crazy form factors. You never know. Yep. We know that Intel and Dell, um, at least, have shown off. Dual screen or folding screen? I, I guess dual screen type devices. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Lenovo show, showed off or talked about mm -hmm. a, a folding lap, uh, laptop of some kind or whatever. So I, 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 I'm sure we'll see more vaporware kind of stuff and then stuff that will happen eventually um, at, at some point. But yeah, like you know, like you and I, I mean, we're Microsoft guys. Um, very concerned with what's happening with Surface. Mm -hmm. Surface is very interesting because, you know, I just – started using the Surface Laptop 2 and the Surface Book 2 again, and I'm struck once again by how excellent these devices really are. They're fantastic. But, you know, they are getting a little bit long in the tooth, and that's one of those things Microsoft's been doing, very Apple-like, is really stretching out the release cycle. Um, and I, I don't know. I, I feel like that's contrary to what Surface needs to be, mm -hmm. but it must be what Surface has to be <laughs> for it to make sense financially. I... It's too bad because they what they should be is on the leading edge. Yep. So we will find out. You got anything else for today, Mr. Throat? This is for me, honestly, this is kind of an interesting conversation, obviously. But aside from this, like it's been kind of dead today. So mm -hmm. I've been going back and doing more research for that programming Windows thing. And uh, I'm going to work on the book this afternoon. But um, 
That's a long way of saying no, not really. Not really. Yeah. Not really at all. Not really at all. How about you? Um, nah. I'm working on a post for some stuff for tomorrow, but nothing that's going to, I don't know. Rock the world. Change anybody's life. I just, I might write up actually just kind of the thoughts around um, Microsoft just exploring different chips this year, right? We've seen the 8CX. They've got some stuff there to write about. I think there's still yeah. a Surface laptop based on AMD coming. So. Don't mind the dog. Yep, yep. Somebody's leaving the house, so the dog has to bark. Or slow descent into insanity. I can't actually hear anything. Oh, well, the dog barked. Are you sure the dog's actually barking and it's just not your <laughs> sanity? Do you even have a dog, pal? Yeah, right. Yes. Wouldn't that be amazing? Well, actually, the dog bark has taken on this thing where like, I, I kind of hear it even when it's not ha uh, happening. So the dog will, the dog the, uh, this weekend growled at another dog while she was sleeping. Mm -hmm. So you could hear a dog outside and the dog said, you know. Well, so, the nice thing is maybe. it's not raining. That's nice. For a That's while. true. That's true. That's going to be true most of this week. Hopefully. And if it's yeah. not, I'm blaming you. All righty. Everybody else, thanks for tuning in. That wraps it up for today. We should be back tomorrow. Uh, have yourselves a wonderful Monday. Everyone agrees we should be back tomorrow. Do they? The question is, will be. <laughs> <laughs>